When driving past Oliver Ames High School, one orange, black, and white sign has caught the eye of passers-by for years since it was built in 1972. The sign announces the Valentine P. Moscato Stadium, built at a time when Moscato, who some say was the winningest coach of all time at the school, had his football team winning titles while playing at Frothingham Park. While Moscato was originally hired as a biology teacher at the school in 1953, his success as a coach for football, basketball, and even his help with the track team made him a school legend and also led him to be hired as the school's athletic director in 1961 on top of his teaching and coaching duties. The stadium, originally built as a grass football field with a track, was showing its age by 2003 when the Hockamock League condemned the track, forcing the school's teams to compete and practice elsewhere. By 2009, a new $1.7 million stadium, complete with a turf field lined for multiple sports instead of just football, a new track, new bleachers, and a lift to the handicap accessible press box opened for athletes and spectators alike at the start of the school year. Fast forward 10 years to when nearly 65% of the school's approximately 1,200 students participate in sports from soccer and football in the fall to lacrosse and track in the spring. My name is Bill Matthews. I'm the athletic director at Oliver Ames High School. I've been the athletic director here since 2012. We recently went through a uh, funding effort to replace our turf field, our synthetic turf field, and our, uh, to resurface our track. Um, the, the field and track have, been, have, have gotten to 10 years of age. So the expected life of these facilities is eight to 10 years, so we got the full life out of them. Um, they were maintained very well during that time, but over that time, the ultraviolet light that hits the turf breaks it down, um, as does the mechanical wear, which are the kids that are playing on it, especially some of the sports like lacrosse, where there's a lot of uh, traffic in the in the goal crease area so it breaks the turf or the fibers down and it gets to the point where it can no longer hold the infill which creates the cushion on the field so over time that breakdown causes the field to get a little bit harder and eventually it can become unplayable when we were approaching that time pr frame there's a test called the GMAX test which we use which is industry standard to determine the hardness of the field um, we were within the guidelines um, as the field existed, but we were approaching those limits and we felt that we needed to move relatively quickly to ensure that we didn't get into a situation where we had to shut the field down. That field with a life expectancy of 8 to 10 years has seen thousands of hours of usage since 2009, which once again put the complex in need of updating, leading the town and its residents to vote to replace and resurface both the field and the track at its May 2019 town meeting. The thing that kills me about this town and this project is that they would rather take the risk of injuring the kids than inconveniencing the athletes. While there was generally support from residents for a new playing surface, what that new surface should look like for Easton athletes was not without controversy. Crumb rubber, derived from old tires, is the current fill of choice in the synthetic field industry, and the safety of its use depends on where you turn for your information. The reason that it's a problem or that there is concern about it is because of all of the chemicals. Basically this stuff, all of those bags that you see over there, um, that contain the crumb rubber, which is just shredded tires. It's a toxic chemical soup. Those, those bags represent one football field, takes about 30,000 shredded tires. So they take tires, which are not allowed to go into landfills because they're so toxic, shred them, which makes them more bioavailable, and then they put them on playgrounds and fields for people to play on. And that's just the infill. It's not the carpet, the green turf, or the padding, or the glue, which we know very little about. So there have been a lot of studies over the years, but particularly very recently, there have been a lot of important studies about the toxicity of the crumb rubber, of those tire crumbs. That is 400,000 pounds of tire and other infill material that goes on one field. 
Just yesterday, um, EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, and the Agency for Toxic, Toxic Substances and Disease Registry came out with volume one of their report on the crumb rubber. They had been tasked back under the Obama administration with investigating whether this was safe material for our children and athletes to play on. And it's not just here on the football field, it's also in our playgrounds. They take that same crumb rubber and they put it in some kind of matrix to make it stay together. So the little kids are playing on it as well. So this report that came out yesterday was not a risk assessment at all. It was only volume one and all it tried to do was characterize what's in this stuff. And we don't know what's in this stuff because the, the composition of tires is proprietary. Tire companies won't tell us exactly what's in there. We do know some of the things, but we don't know all of the things. And what the report that was released yesterday said was they looked, they found 355 compounds in the shredded tire that are used for these fields. Of those, they only knew the toxicity information of 47%. So that means 188 compounds that are in those bags that our athletes are playing on. We have no idea whether they're carcinogens, whether they're toxic, or what they do to people. More than half, we have no idea. That's scary to me right there. But even scarier is the fact that another group in 2018, last year, did look at the toxicity of what they knew was in there. And they found 52 known, suspected, or um, probable carcinogens in the tire crumb. On the one hand, research and studies presented to town and school officials reflected information they said pointed to the safety of the crumb rubber used in the field. In fact, an EPA report released in July that addressed exposure to tire crumb rubber on synthetic turf fields found the following. Quote, in general, the findings from the report support the premise that while chemicals are present as expected in the tire crumb rubber, human exposure appears to be limited based on what is released into air or simulated biological fluids, quote. The report was not a risk assessment, nor did its authors say it could be used to identify a level above which health effects could occur. In addition, in a letter dated June 2016, Dr. Archie Blyer, a pediatric oncologist who chaired the Children's Cancer Group for a decade, said research he oversaw that was conducted to determine what caused cancer in children, adolescents, and young adults showed no evidence of environmental factors causing cancers in those age groups, including lymphomas implicated in the crumb rubber controversy. But in the situation that we're in and what our needs are with the number of sports that we host, the level of competition that we play, what our competition has for fields, I think it's the only practical solution that we really have for a field.